What's up, everybody? Do right back at it again with another video on Ready or Not. Today, we're going to be talking about a couple of articles that may have confirmed Ready or Not to be scheduled on the next generation of consoles, if these articles are to be believed. Now, just a warning, take everything that you hear with a grain of salt, okay? Because I don't necessarily believe these, but they aren't out of the realm of possibility. I thought I'd cover them because, you know, news for Ron has been ridiculously slow, but I guess that's to be expected at this point. But yeah, let's get into it. So, for those of you that don't know, there is a Italian article 2017 Ready or Not il successore spirituale di SWAT 4, una pietra miliare dello shooting tattico su PC. I really don't know what the hell they're saying, but it's pretty obvious that they're covering Ready or Not here. It was something that kind of didn't seem too out of the ordinary, like, it just seemed like they were really fluffing up Ready or Not here, and I honestly didn't think it was going to be newsworthy, but, uh, the purpose of this article was to cover an interview that was had between Void Interactive's investor Julio Rodriguez and PlayStation Magazine UK. It says here, fair warning, this is Google Translation, in this part of the article labeled The Potential of Next Gen. During a recent interview, published on the official PlayStation Magazine UK, the managing director of Void Interactive, Julio Rodriguez, explained how the characteristics of PS5 make the console more than suitable to accommodate a product such as Ready or Not. Ready or Not, for the most part, is already designed to meet the needs of PC users. And strictly from a technical point of view, the hardware specifications of Sony's new generation of consoles should allow us to easily convert the game without any sacrifices whatsoever, especially when you consider the requirements for the game that are already listed and available on the Steam page. That's not necessarily true. It takes a bit to find the Steam page on Steam, so, uh, because it's unlisted. But if you guys want a link to both the supporter and the regular edition on Steam, I'll have a link down below. It does show the requirements for the game. So yeah, if you want to see it, link's down below. Let's continue on here. Mr. Rodriguez predicts that the PlayStation 5 version of the game will offer a high frame rate with next to no loading times, all thanks to the SSD. The graphics quality of Ready or Not is substantially more comparable to the likes of the PC edition because it will share ray tracing support. Then he goes on to explain what that is. A technology of significantly altering the overall rendering of an image. That's not really a good explanation, but basically what ray tracing does is it really brings out the shadows, the lighting, the illumination. It just overall makes the game look more detailed. I'm definitely not an expert on this sort of thing, so if you want to correct me, go ahead. But, like, it's actually pretty impressive that a console would actually be able to do that sort of thing, because in order for you to actually do ray tracing, you have to get, like, a, anything with an RTX, I believe. It's actually pretty impressive that they might be able to do that. Continuing on, in general terms, according to when we saw the gameplay trailer that was published by the developers on their YouTube channel, they were talking about a production characterized by a very promising technical sector, especially for their independent panorama. Textures, geometries, polygonal models, and shaders seem to reach the levels that would be expected from a AAA game. Yeah, so he said this in the past through email, that Ready or Not is basically like a AAA game, but it's being worked on by indie developers. I think it's interesting how he's bringing this up. But anyways, with the complicity of a credible and effective lighting system, which increases the scenic impact of the volumetric and particle effects. Again, we talk about the preliminary assessments, which we hope will be confirmed by the final version of the game. The managing director said that he was particularly interested in the haptic feedback technology of the PS5 DualSense, which I believe is the new name for the new controller that's coming out for PlayStation 5. I still prefer DualShockers, but that's just me, which could offer a new dimension to the shootings of Ready or Not, capable of clearly increasing the sense of involvement triggered by the screen action. So yeah, that's basically what the article said here, and again, this is is um, Google translated. Also, if you want to read the full article, it's linked down below. I only picked out the thing that I found was interesting and the rest of it is pretty long. They also have a video too that has around 40k views, I would say. I'll, I'll link that down too. But yeah, the article mentioned that there was an interview that was going on with the PlayStation Magazine UK. The same person that found this article also found the transcript of what was being said between Julio and the interviewer. So let's go ahead and dive into that. It's relatively short. It says here, uh, Void Interactive will launch Ready or Not on PC first, but would like to make the jump to the next generation PlayStation down the line. Managing Director Julio Rodriguez tells us how the team will make the most of next gen tech. Rodriguez seems optimistic about what PS5 means for PC focused developers, saying the specs allows for a broader range of games to be able to approach the console market. As for Ready or Not itself, Rodriguez tells us our game design will lend itself to run excellently on the PS5 and we are currently achieving 80 plus FPS on mid-range devices. He clarifies that things are far from final 
terminal and that the team still has a lot of testing ahead of them they asked what ps5's ssd and ray tracing capabilities which pcs already have will do for the devs and he says loading times haven't been an issue for us but games have been traditionally quite slow on the console rodriguez explains this tech will be a big boost and big players like nvidia are proving very willing to partner with developers who make it happen on pc haptic feedback is something gamers on all platforms have seen far less of however rodriguez says of the new dualshocks haptic triggers this can bring an extra dimension of shooting and or being shot at or suppressed ps5 specs have yet to be officially confirmed though we do know a little more about its capabilities the article saying to skip to a certain page but i don't think rodriguez actually knows the specs here rodriguez said that if the rumored stats turn out to be true it could make ps5 potentially have a graphical and frame rate parity with the pc build which excites us the game will go into beta and alpha later this year but only for players who pre-order it on pc and yeah that's pretty much that so i do have some concerns about this because for those of you that don't know or maybe don't remember julio rodriguez is the dude that inadvertently and unintentionally got the ready or not community pissed off at void interactive back in 2018 when we initially thought that the trailer was supposed to come out in june july of that year this was the guy who was sending out emails for people who wanted information about ready or not he would make promises like how the game was set to release in november of 2018 and obviously that didn't happen he also said if you get in contact with this big youtuber or big streamer and hook us up with them then you may or may not get a free copy of ready or not and that for sure didn't happen he said that content creators will be able to actually show gameplay footage while the alpha was going on and everything was under nda so long as they send it emails i followed that letter to the t and that didn't happen yeah there were a bunch of people that got those types of emails at one point the developers were so quiet that the emails were like the only source of news that i really had so people would start sending me information that jr was putting out like i don't think he was trying to you know get people to get pissed off i just think he was just trying to sell the game really like there was just like a real big disconnect between jr and the development team and i guess there was like some sort of spat that was going on because after that when the game didn't come out in november and the trailer kept getting pushed back like the emails really stopped coming in like now they only come in just for like updates on the alpha no longer with that jr signature so i mean i find it interesting how his name comes up here like i've actually seen what this guy looks like and it doesn't seem like he's someone who plays like video games a lot it just seems like he's just like a regular businessman like maybe he doesn't understand how development works maybe like i don't know i'm just i'm just taking a wild shots at the dark right now but he seems more like a opportunist than somebody that actually understands you know game development that's why there might be a bit of a disconnect there between the developers and the investor here at least that's just my assessment i don't know it could be because when he was talking to us he was talking as if you know the developers were actually talking to him but when we tried to like get the email and show it off to the developers they'd be like uh new phone who this so yeah this is a story that has some merit but at the same time i have doubts because the developers of ready or not have always said that if the game does really good on pc then it will for sure go to console and so far it's sold around i would say six thousand copies just in a uh, supporter edition i'm just going off of the numbers that are on discord there could be more than that for all i know but that's already a lot of money i mean for an indie game and we're not even counting the people that are buying it for 40 bucks there could also be people who have the supporter edition don't even know about the discord or don't even use discord but yeah so i think my only thing is just how julio in the past has told us a lot of misinformation and i don't think it was intentional I think it was just him, you know, trying to use his marketing moves on us and they just didn't pan out that well. But yeah, is this article trying to tell me that Ready or Not is going to launch with PS5? I mean, it for sure is going to be on the next generation of consoles, but I, I was thinking maybe like 2022, 2023 would be like the right time to drop it. But maybe Void Interactive is a lot more ahead than we think. What are your guys' thoughts? Also, I know that a lot of people are going to look at this and be like, oh my God, is Ready or Not going to be exclusive to PS4? I'm pretty sure it's not going to be exclusive or at least if they do you know get like some sort of contract it's most likely going to be like exclusive for like a year and then head on over to xbox but i don't know it actually makes sense that sony would actually get ready or not first because sony seems to be the guy to actually get a game like ready or not because they've been dropping really good games on their console so it's definitely not out of the ordinary but uh yeah and that's pretty much all i got to say with this video what are your thoughts do you think ready or not is already confirmed to come out on the next generation of consoles can we trust this information 
information. Only time will tell, I suppose. If you're someone that likes the fact that I cover these types of videos, be sure to like, comment, share the video. Or if you're new, be sure to subscribe and ding the bell so you can see my latest videos on tactical games. If you're someone that wants to support the channel, be sure to check out my Patreon. Just send two bucks a month. That's all I really need. Now, with that all being said, I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch, and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.